If you're watching this on the Moodle or floated by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and in this presentation we're looking at key ideas in therapy. An introduction to integrative therapy. So what is integrative therapy? Well, a BACP definition would say that integrative therapy is when several distinct models of counselling and psychotherapy are used together. And that's a definition from their website. So how is it applied? Well, on the screen, you've got two distinct ideas in therapy. You've got the person-centred approach by Carl Rogers and the cognitive behavioural approach by Aaron Beck. And we're going to look how therapists had blend these two approaches together to produce what we're going to be calling an integrative approach. So the therapist may use, or the integrative therapist may use, the person-centred approach to build a therapeutic alliance. In other words, to build a relationship with the client and try and gain a rapport and an understanding with them. To developing a trusting, safe relationship. And this really shouldn't be overlooked in the therapeutic relationship because trusting, safe relationships means that clients are more liable to tell you the truth, to tell you what is really on their worried minds um, and not be kind of stuck in maybe issues around shame or distrust or fear. So the person-centered approach is really good if it's practiced well to help clients feel that they're valued and they feel safe. And finally, to try and understand the client's unique view of the world. One of the things that person-centered therapy is really, really useful for is to help the therapist get as near as they possibly can to the client's perceptual reality. In other words, try to see the world as they see it. And this is what we call empathy. And to anybody who's practiced person-centered approach, this will, this will feel quite familiar. But the integrative therapist then blends it with another approach. I'm going to have a look at the CBT approach. Um, so they may challenge your rational thinking. So the therapist may challenge your rational thinking, which is quite different to the person-centered approach, where in the person-centered approach, there isn't really any kind of challenge of irrational thinking. There may be challenges, but it's actually seeing an irrational thought and saying, is this rational or not? Give strategy and guidance. CBT is a good therapy for individuals who need a technique to overcome their difficulties. So for some clients, they may want strategy. They may want some background into why their thinking may be difficult for them and how it affects their lives. And also it produces a measurable outcome. With CBT, you can basically start with a client Get them to get them to write down or fill a core assessment tooling which shows them where they are in terms of their anxiety and their worries and at the end of the therapy you can fill the core assessment tooling and just see how far they've traveled what's changed i have to say you can do that for person-centered therapy as well but um, it's it's more used in cbt another way of thinking about integrative therapy is this picture it is the ingredients for soup and if you look at the ingredients, they don't really look that appetizing. Like the therapies, they are individual items that are just placed on a table. Um, so it's very much about the way the practitioner practices. And if it's done properly, it's, it's a kind of making sure the blend of approaches suits the client. And here we have a tasty soup made from those different ingredients. So if you think of the therapy as different ingredients that the skilled therapist or the skilled therapist that uses a, a multidisciplinary approach uses, they can blend in the, 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 the therapies to produce something unique to the client. So food for thought. Well, let's have a look at some advantages and disadvantages of using a, a multi-approach or an integrative approach. Well, the advantages are different approaches may suit more clients. In therapy, we're always talking about best fit for clients, and that's really important. So by having maybe one or two different disciplines, the therapist can apply it in a bespoke way to clients. It allows a wider range of approaches to be used, and this is really building on the first point, that some clients may need 
a different or a more bespoke made to measure approach for them. And it allows counsellors to tailor the approach for individual clients. Well, I've kind of covered that, but some clients may have one or two difficulties that are causing them problems. And it may be that one just needs the client to be heard and listened to, which person-centred is ideal for. But it may be that they have some irrational thinking or fears or anxieties, in which case then a more cognitive structured approach. So the integrative therapist may say may be useful. But there are some disadvantages of integration and let's have a look at those. Well, it dilutes the theoretical consistency. We looked at person-centered therapy and a behavioral therapy. They are two different approaches. Person-centered therapy is an inside-out approach. It believes that clients have a rich inner world which they work with and make sense of their lives through. And the idea of the humanistic or person-centered approach is that clients can find their own healing capabilities. Uh, it talks about getting their organismic valuing processes to kick in and start to develop themselves. It's a growth model that relies on the counselor using the core conditions of empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard to help the client develop their own core conditions within them. Behavioural therapies are different. They believe, for the, for the majority of behavioural therapies, that uh, difficulties are caused by external events and how we view external events. So there is a bit of a difference um, between the actual core modalities and the theoretical consistencies. Therapist training and trust in the core model. The courses I train, we take three years to train counsellors to a point where they get a diploma and they can call themselves a qualified counsellor it's quite a short space of time and I always say to my students this is the beginning of your practice journey from now on you're going to be developing your core model and thinking about your core model and getting more and more used to working with it and indeed your clients within this core model if you then start to add another model on, are you going to take three years to train? Um, most of them are done quite quickly. You can get a certificate or a diploma in another modality. But I ask you, how much do you know about your core modality before you start training in another? In other words, how much do you know about what you've learned at, to the point of, of qualifying before you go and train in another modality? And it could be confusing for the client. We saw the soup in the previous slide, and I think that's a really good metaphor for how uh, multidisciplinary therapists work, people who use two different types of therapy. And I think that the skilled people produce a really good approach that is really seamless and clients feel that this, this is how it should be done. But you may get a therapist who gets a bit worried or a bit feared around using two and then jumps from one to the other. So it's a bit, a bit like um, being in a nightclub and someone playing rap music and then going on to classical music. The jump would be just really odd. It would feel odd and it would be confusing. So multidisciplinary models or integrative models need to be put together like we saw the soup with care if you need some further information well if you're watching on moodle if you click the resource tab above the red arrow there'll be some information on moodle if you're watching at the college if you're watching on youtube if you click in the space bar below below the youtube video i'll put some links on and i'll put a link to bob cook's blog who has done an excellent piece on integration and finally as always thank you for watching.